Hi everyone, in this video I'll be giving an overview and demonstration of how to use RustConf protocol for configuring networking devices. Uh, RustConf is a protocol which we can use for configuring networking devices in a programmatic way. It is a model driven programming because instead of direct CLI commands, we'll be using data models. Data models like YANG, XML, then JSON, all these kind of formats we'll be using so and we will be able to initiate these kind of communications from python or any other kind of automation tools uh, rest uh, stands for representational state transfer uh, it is actually used for creating web services so that means uh, rest will be working on https port and it will support https operations such as uh, get post put delete etc so we'll i'll explain all that in detail so and it even supports xml and uh, json format while giving inputs now before we move into rascon uh, we will get an overview of uh, netconf so i have created another video uh, on netconf and uh, there i explained yang data model how to initiate netconf uh, communication to a network device for configuring or getting the getting the configuration or state uh, you can have a look into that video if you want to know more details about netconf but i'll give an overview in this video uh, so netconf is actually using uh, it uses xml for exchanging data to the device and it uses ssh if you see the pre previous video you will be able to see how to initiate it so i'll show how to enable netconf to enable the netconf the command is netconf hyphen yang once you give this command so now device will be capable of uh, running netconf and by default it will be running on port 830 so if you want to initiate a netconf connection to this device is a search admin at my device name is csr3 dot test dot lab Mm, sorry, I have to give the port number. If it be eight thirty, so now what happens is through XML data transfer, the device is sending me the capabilities. Actually, it is telling it supports all these uh, formats, Yang data model formats. I have explained about uh, this in detail in the previous video. So now to create a successful handshake what you need to do you need to send a hello to the device. So I'll open the so this is the hello response you need to give. So you know, this is a proper message that's why I'm not getting any error message in terminal otherwise if there is a syntax error I would have got some error in the terminal. Now to get the complete configuration this is the netcon format. So I got the configuration in an XML format if you want you can just put it into another tool and you can see it in a proper readable format so you can see the device ip address the route the default route all these details now to simplify the output i'll get an output of specific interface 
so here in this I'm trying to get the configuration of gigabit 3 Uh, there was a delay in the response actually so you can see the IP address which I configured now using CLI which is reflected in netconf now if you want to assign a specific IP to another interface you can configure it using this format so it is going to assign 2.2.2.5 for gigabit 2 Now there is no IP address for Gigabit 2. Yeah. I got the mess, uh, response OK. Now you can see the notification here. Yeah, you can see it has assigned the IP address. So this is how we can use netconf. Now uh, we will move into rustconf. So netconf is based on session because we initiated a single SSH session and we are executing all the commands in that session but when we go to rustconf it will be using HTTP so you need to have another tool called postman so I'll explain about all that de in detail to enable rustconf the command is rustconf IPP space HTTP secure server once you execute these commands rustconf will be enabled in the router uh, regarding netconf uh, I'll put the previous video in the description and notification if you want to know more about netconf you can have a look into that video so now we'll go to the RFC of rustconf RFC 8040 is RFC Here you can see it is a HTTPS, HTTP based protocol that provides programmatic interface for accessing data defined in YANG. So YANG data model is a common data model which uh, we can use for interacting with network devices. It will be defined by a standard body like IETF or uh, vendors, individual vendors. So if you want to know more about YANG data model. So this is one of the github for yang data model so once you go inside yang you'll be able to see two folders standard and vendors so if you go inside standards you can see ietf defined yang data models so all the vendors will be using same ietf defense uh, standard if they support otherwise individual vendors will have their own data models so if you go inside vendors you can see multiple vendors so 1671 so you can see this supports a lot of yang datas I have explained about Yang in the video about netconf you can have a look into that in this video we will be seeing uh, using rustconf how to configure interface how to delete an interface or give some configuration now we will go to the standard and uh, for example ietf defined data model you can you'll be able to see an interface configuration yeah ietf interfaces dot yang so this is the actual code of the data yang data model but if you want it in a structured readable or a simple format there is another way so what you can do is you can use another tool called pyang 
you can install Payang using pip install Payang. So I already have installed it. And uh, if you want to get all these files, what you can do, you can go to this yang and do a git clone so what you can do you can just do a git clone of this url so git clone and if you put that url it will automatically clone that so similar way i have uh, cloned uh, this inside this folder so you can see the complete data model is available in my machine now we will see the structure of one of the ETF defined interface uh, st standard data model so I will go to IETF RFC so you will be able to see yeah so this is the same file which we saw in the github so we are going to decode this because ietf defines the data structure for the interface configuration so which all the vendors should follow so that using same data model you will be able to pass the data to the device and the device would be able to understand all each parameter i'll show how to decode it using pyn so we need to give the command pyn hyphen f IETF hyphen interfaces dot yang. So this is how they defined how uh, the configuration of interface should look like. So so first interfaces under under that interface name each interface will have a name description type whether it is enabled or not admin status and statistics uh, so these are some inter interface statistics which will be able to only read so other certain parameters you can see we can edit so in the interface name we can edit description so this is how they defined and every vendor should follow this standard so when we pass the data it should be in this format that's what it meant so that's what it is uh, that is called the yang data model now we'll go back to the rfc of uh, rsconf so you can see it, that also is defined in yang data model same as netconf and there are certain resources which because uh, since it is working on http it will be listening to certain urls and you need to hit individual uris for accessing each for interface there will be a uri for username there will be another uri so it will be formatted in that way we will go into those details then you can see the methods what it supports options at the major op, uh, major methods what we need to look is get get is one of the method for getting the details or configuration and uh, post uh, will be using for creating something and below that you can see put put uh, will be using for create or replace some values then patch will be for merging some configuration uh, we will see those in detail mm, while well, uh, we configure the device then you can see the media type what it supports so uh, earlier i said uh, it supports xml or json you can see this is how we need to define that when we send the request i will show how to use how to do this using postman then uh, there is something called root resource and api resource so So there is some method for discovering all these 
things um, it is defined in RFC so all the RSConf uh, should follow same standard so what it says to determine the root of the RSConf API so we need to go to this particular URL well known slash host meta and this will be giving the root so root is going to be the rasconf url so what we'll do we'll just directly try to hit to the device so three dot So it is asking to give the username and password. This is not the method for accessing REST API. I'm just showing. So it is just listening to that URL. If we hit that, we'll be able to see the response. And the actual tool which you need to use is Postman or something. So we'll move into Postman sometime. So before that, I'll just show compare we'll compare it with rsc first so you can see the server might respond as follows so so now we got the url rest conf so next what we need to do uh, we need to identify the api resource for identifying the api resource we'll try to hit that uh, rest conf url once Here we will remove the dot. Yeah, I mean it is prompting for password. I will give the password. Yeah. Mm, now you can see the API resource which is data operations. Now I will show you how to hit uh, this from Postman. Postman is a free tool available from you know you can download it from here I download a Linux version of Postman and uh, kept it here so I'll just open Postman if you want you can just log in so that you will be able to save all your request and response details I'll create another video on explaining Postman how to use it effectively now first uh, we'll try to add the URL I'll just give this URL and send the data let's see what so first time when you run postman if you don't have trusted certificate for the device what you are contacting will get SSL verification so to avoid that you can go to settings and you can switch off the SSL verification but in real time in, in the production environment it is recommended to have trusted certificate in all the devices so I just okay now I am getting there are saying that unauthorized because initially when I opened from browser it was prompting for password here I am getting unauthorized access so so for that we need to define username and password of this device so I am using basic authentication basic username and password so I will give the username and password here now let me try sending this data yeah now if you see the previous output it is same similar way you can even check the root resource how to get it now if you want to save it what you can do you don't need to save it it is not important uh, this uh, so this value the getting api resource 
but still if you want to save any api request what you can do you can just create a collection here you give the name rest rest conf demo I have saved it now if I want to run it you can just go here and execute okay now we'll go back to RFC so there is another feature called uh, um, server module information and uh, we will be able to receive all the supported modules uh, in the device or the features what it supports so to get that you can see the url which you need to hit so i'll copy this copy i'll go to postman again Let me try sending this to the device. Now device should be able to send back the supported module list. So you can see a status 200. Okay, 200 means uh, so server accepted the server means my device accepted the request and it is sending the data. So we'll wait for this to process. Now you can see the module supported in this device. So it supports a lot of uh, Cisco proprietary and IETF defined standards. So you'll be able to see each one of that in the Yang folder of Cisco or RFC. So if you're interested you can go to the yang site and explore all this okay now we'll see this this library ietf yang library so this is that library it uh, it will be inside my rfc folder as well so we'll see that file here yeah this is that library so the yang structure is in this way but still i will be able to read it using payang we'll read it ETF hyphen Yang hyphen yeah so what I was using here is so we'll go to postman and see module state I was using module state so you can see the module state here so which gives a module id a module name all these details and uh, i requested for that this is this these are just introduction of rustconf later i'll show uh, it will be interesting when you start configuring the device so we'll be proceeding to that now to get the interface details of a router so there is a uri so this will be using ietf defined interfaces model so i'll copy this i'll paste it 
So all these requests, whatever we are doing is get request now. So you can see the interface details what what is configured in the device. If we execute show IP 